Yesterday we thought about that garden of redemption as we thought about the busy intersection where the bus station was. Looking to the, the right was a place of crucifixion. But if I stood in that same spot and looked to my left, I see much more of the picture of this garden. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden. In the garden, a new sepulchre wherein never a man had yet been laid. And in that garden, there was a tomb. It had been hewn out by the hands of a man called Joseph of Arimathea. He was a rich man, and yet for some reason, he hewed out this tomb, and he made it there in his own hands, because the tomb wasn't for him. That tomb was for the Lord Jesus Christ. The garden of redemption became a garden of rest. After the horrendous events of the crucifixion of the Saviour, when the Lord Jesus Christ was able to save people from their sins, able there by his own precious life to die for our sins, and there they took down the Lord Jesus Christ. It was loving hands that took him down. Nicodemus, a man who had been scared to confess that he was the Lord's, and now he comes forth with love and he takes down the body of the Lord Jesus. Joseph of Arimathea, one of the Sanhedrin, and he comes, a man of great authority, and he comes and he takes down the body of the Lord Jesus. Two men, they take down the body of the Lord Jesus. They wind him in that linen cloth and they put him in that tomb. And over that tomb, Rome, the Roman soldiers, they put the seal of Rome over that tomb and they, as it were, make the message, don't anyone dare enter or touch that tomb. I'm just so thankful to God that Rome, with all its might and all its power, was swept away by the wondrous power of the Lord Jesus Christ. All the kingdoms, they rise and they fall. We don't need to worry about politics because God has it all fully in his control. And into that tomb, it became a garden of rest. They put the Saviour in that tomb. It's a mystery surrounding all the events of that day when that was a garden of rest. But I just think about tombs throughout our country. And over the tombs, they put these words, R-I-P, rest in peace. And yet for so many people, the reality is, the cold reality is, is that it is not peace. Because the Bible tells us that there are two destinies. There's heaven and there's hell. Heaven for those who've put their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and hell for those who have rejected the Saviour. We thought yesterday of redemption, where the price was paid in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And yet there are millions of people who walk past that blood, who shake their head like they did in the days when the Lord Jesus was crucified and they reject the Saviour and they want nothing to do with him. Oh dear soul, why don't you, on a day of rest, come to trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, to place your trust in him, to know that you can rest truly in peace by knowing peace with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. What a place of peace it can be for you. No wonder the hymn writer says, peace, perfect peace. Because there could be a day in your experience when you trust the Saviour and he enters into your life and he gives you peace. If you've got a Bible, read it for yourself and trace with uh, your pen and underline those words, peace, because the Lord says, my peace I give unto you, not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And the Lord Jesus Christ, he offers peace for those who put their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. It was a garden of peace, a garden of rest that day. I wonder if you've ever taken time in your quietness to realise that you are the sinner who needs the Saviour. Stop looking over our shoulders at others and saying, well, they're worse than me. The fact of the matter is that Bible says that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And if you're a sinner, you need the Saviour. And that Saviour died at Calvary that you could have his peace, that you could have his rest, that you might know him. What a day of rest it must have been there in the garden of rest when the tomb was sealed and the seal of Rome was over it and people were, not, were told not to disturb that scene. Well, I'm so thankful that God would change it all on the next day. He died that we might be forgiven. He died to make us good, that we at last might go to heaven, cleansed by his precious blood. And friend, on that day of rest, perhaps you could just look at that and say, I need the Lord Jesus as my saviour. Trust in him, know him, and know his rest and his peace this very day. In the place where he was crucified, there was a garden. In the garden, a new sepulchre 
where a never man had laid before.